Okay, so clearly the best way to make these things cheaper is to go reusable. That's right. Uh, and when we think of reusable, we, we often think of that spacecraft are reused, but you know, when we look at the Saturn V, only really that really, really small, tiny bit at the top is the thing that came back down. All of this was bits that landed in the ocean, End up in Earth orbit. Earth orbit. I mean, one of the fuel tanks is reused as a space lab. <laughs> yes, exactly. There's bits on the moon. Yeah. So, you know, this is all, as we've talked about before, sunk costs because it is not the fuel, it is the building the stuff. And when you build it a dozen times, you pay for it a dozen times. Now, people have known this for a while. And people right. have been trying to come up with reusable rockets, right? They have. And in fact, this idea started to come around shortly after the Apollo era. Uh, and this is kind of the first attempt at a reusable rocket. Uh, the McDonnell uh, Douglas uh, reusable rocket. It's a very cone-like system, but the idea was, can we get it to go up and come back down? It had some success, but not enough to warrant rapid production. It couldn't carry a lot. It was kind of before its time, let's say. But NASA said, what? We need a reusable system that can go up multiple times go up cheaply and be used often. And so they had their heart in the right place. They so did. That was the, the space shuttle. However, reality was a bit different. It was. Look, and, and the space shuttle worked. It had over a hundred missions. They had some issues. And obviously we had the two disasters with Columbia and Challenger. But the shuttle went up. It would go up there for a couple of weeks. It would land. It would be reused. And even the solid rocket boosters, the two right, white rocket boosters on the side, came back into the ocean. They could be refurbished and reused. In fact, of all of the launches, only four boosters were never recovered. Two because they blew up, and the other two, they were, uh, there were some weather issues and they couldn't recover them. Yeah, so I mean, the big external fuel tank is left in space. Yep. Um, but the actual um, shuttle itself and the two solid boosters, so. It's, it's, a big, it's a big step in compared to what the reusability was. So right, that should have been way cheaper and launch every few weeks? Yeah, in the end it didn't work that way. And it didn't work that way for a few reasons. And one is something that we've talked about quite a bit is when you're developing these things, there is a lot of upfront cost. And that upfront cost is research, development, and testing. And the space shuttle didn't do as well as they could have in that area, I would say. Yeah, I mean, you have to bear in mind the politics of the time. I mean, the US had been spending very large amounts of money on rockets to beat the Russians. That's right. And once they'd beaten the Russians, they lost interest. Um, there was also this Vietnam War thing going yes. on at the time. And, but they had all these key marginal constituencies. There's lots of money being spent. They couldn't get rid of it. And they got used to Americans. They had to do something, but their money was falling off a cliff. Politicians yeah. weren't throwing bucket loads of money at them anymore. And so and a lot of the top engineers were leaving. Yep. And so suddenly you've got fewer people, fewer money, and you've got to do something that sounds better than the Saturn V rocket. Um, and the result was this was done on the cheap. Yeah. And the net result is if you most of the rockets, the development cost seems awful at the time, but the running cost over decades is it's cheap. much, much, much more. Exactly. Much more. And in fact, it just then almost disappears as a small amount. So they should have spent a lot more money up front to build something that was easy and cheaper to use. So they said it was reusable, that was, we have a reusable rocket. But in practice, almost every component had to be tested, taken out, repaired. It didn't take them two weeks between launches, it's more like a year. Yeah, I mean, the, each shuttle went up, maybe if they were lucky, twice a year. There was only, you know, about 10 missions total you could do a year. It was not the cheap, reusable, weekly to monthly flight, it ended up being on average, one and a half billion dollars per flight. You know, even the heat tiles and the shuttle, they were all individually numbered and had to be in a very specific location. So you have to take each one off, examine it, work on it for every individual shuttle, for every individual launch. There were thousands of people whose only job was take shuttles that just launched, rebuild it from scratch. It was practically a new shuttle. I mean, yeah. some bits were the same, but the engine had to be rebuilt. The tiles often had to be rebuilt. And so it actually turned out that while in principle this is great and reusable, it actually cost considerably more per kilogram yeah. to put something in space on the space shuttle than it did on the Saturn V. They'd be better off financially ditching it and going back to 60s technology. Yeah, by, by a factor of at least two or three. I mean, in some cases, people are thinking it was costing about $50,000 per kilogram on the space shuttle, where it was 20, 25,000 on the Saturn V. 
So nice idea on paper, but as you said, they kind of shortcutted some of those development research costs, which didn't make it what it was. And this is not commonly known by the general public. That's right. I mean, NASA has a very large public relations enterprise. You've worked with many of these people on many occasions, as have I. Yes. And they, their job is to make Americans patriotic about the NASA and talk about the great things. And people don't notice the price tag attached to it. No. Well, the people who do notice are the congressmen who, in whose districts that money is being spent. Yes. So for them, this is not a bug, this is a feature. That's right. Having thousands of people rebuilding the shuttle each time it takes off is a good thing. Those Especially when you're in a marginal seat in, say, Houston uh, or Ohio or wherever the case may be, I'm creating jobs and bringing money to my local community. So it was, a, in some ways, a fiasco. Yeah. NASA actually went backwards. In principle, it was reasonable. In practice, it wasn't. It was hideously expensive. And because it cost so much to launch it, the entire NASA budget was going just keeping this thing launching. Yeah. And no one wanted to use it for commercial launches no. because there were much cheaper alternatives, the Russian proton boosters or the European Ariadna. But by, by far cheaper than the shuttle. So why would you do it? And so, of course, the US had to mandate that things had to be launched on it. I mean, it's good if you want to actually send astronauts up to, to repair the Hubble yes. Space Telescope. You could only do that this way. And look, and, and that, there were some very good successes and missions because of that. You're right. It almost certainly would have been cheaper just to launch multiple Hubble Space Telescopes. Yes. Um, production line going, churn them out the other end. So uh, it didn't particularly make sense. But things are getting better now, right? They are. And look, eventually people decided to bite the bullet, let's stop running the shuttle and free up the money to do something else. Well, and this is the interesting, you know, when um, eventually the decision was made to cancel the shuttle by first uh, Bush and then Obama, you know, it was kind of like, what are you doing? This is sacrilege to Americans. But they knew, they knew what had to be done. Someone just had to bite the bullet. And so instead they said, look, we're gonna go and invest in private companies. Uh, you know, groups like SpaceX have received billions of dollars for NASA, but it's actually the price of three shuttle launches. You know, NASA is, or SpaceX is now launching Americans, astronauts to the space station and they did for the development cost of two and a half shuttle launches. And now everything is essentially pocket money because of how cheap it is to operate. So this investment now in new reusability has changed the game. And this is how SpaceX did it. They said, look, we are gonna find a way of making it cheaper by properly <laughs> doing the research to figuring out what reusability means, not uh, kind of reusable because that screw was used in the shuttle. And a, a private company has many advantages. Yes. I mean, the NASA is being tugged around by politics. Yes. So they can't necessarily do the best thing. They have to do the thing that will get congressional approval, which may well involve spending money in particular constituencies, whether or not that makes any sort of sense. Yes. Also, their budget changes every year. Every That's year. Right. Oh, give them more money. No, take it away. Take it. So you can't plan anything. Every time the budget goes low, all the good people leave, and then you can't hire them back because they've got jobs in Silicon Valley afterwards. And there's, there's a long-running joke that every American president would always say, I'm going to put a, humans back on the moon in eight years, eight to ten years. And that was because by the time they get into the second term, then they can actually allocate funding. They don't spend any money in their first term. They just say they're doing it, and no one yells at them for spending extra money. So this is a horrible situation, this thing that no one can get rid of, costing huge amounts of money and achieving very little. I mean, during this era, there's lots of robot probes to the outer solar yes. system did amazing things, as we talked about in the planets course. For a fraction, I mean, for less than one shuttle launch in some cases. But the shuttle was draining large amounts of money, and they were getting increasingly desperate to find reasons. And the, in some sense, the whole International Space Station was set up purely as an excuse to keep the shuttle running. Now, it's changed, and this has changed. And it, again, it has changed because these private companies have said, look, we can develop it the way we want, we can set our own goals, and we can do it. And SpaceX is kind of that first big company through using rockets and fuel. And yes, they had to figure out how if you add more fuel, you're adding more weight. But they realized the gain of that extra weight carrying up to safely guide you back down was worth it in the end because as we see the fuel cost is very small and the manufacturing costs and development costs ends up being big and now we're seeing other groups even saying well we want to do this too but maybe we're just finding simple straightforward ways uh, and recently we saw rocket lab uh, the new zealand based rocket which is launching smaller rockets for some of these smaller satellites we looked at they launched their rocket and afterwards, as the satellites went up, the rocket booster came back down with a parachute. And the idea was, well, if the parachute slows down to the center of this rocket booster, well, it's a smaller rocket. 
which means if we get a big enough helicopter, it can support its weight because all of that fuel, that weight, is it's now an empty, gone. empty shell of a rocket. Yeah, exactly. You're just you're an empty tank coming down. And yes, it weighs about a ton, but the helicopter can kept, uh, support about four tons. So why don't we have a helicopter go and hook up to the top of it, grab it, and then bring it back down safely, land and reuse it? And they've done that, you know? And yes, you have to launch the helicopter, but flying a helicopter is a lot cheaper than building a new shuttle every time. That's right. I mean, suddenly you think about the SpaceX landing is looks way cool. Yes. And it's development costs. So yes. Another thing that they can do that government agencies can't is try lots of experiments and see if they fail. Yeah. And this is how any experiment is done. You try lots of times, yeah. but it becomes politically very difficult if NASA, another NASA rocket blows up, we're going to ask questions in Congress. The SpaceX can say, look, we expect the first 20 or 5 to blow up, and eventually we'll, each time something blows up, we learn why it blew up. And, and it's that. true. Then we launch the next one that blows up for a different reason, we fix that. Uh, and this is how your cars are built. Yes. The, the car that you buy is not... It's not the first car that's run off the assembly line. <laughs> oh, no, they've done a lot, they've done a lot of tests. They found the bugs and got it out. So, and I think this is kind of the, the thing that we miss, is this reusability in the way that private companies are willing to change and accept the risks and do it differently than you said as government is making it now dramatically cheaper because now they are getting multiple launches of a rocket per one rocket and per that development cost. So now you're spreading it out more. They're also able to fly more, which means more customers want to go in. And they're really reusable. They don't need thousands of people to rebuild them for six months between every takeoff. Exactly. I mean, in fact, you know, there are now multiple SpaceX and other rocket boosters that have been used 10 dozen times. And it's just kind of, we can keep doing it. We can keep doing it. We can keep doing it. Uh, and other companies are, are in this as well. It's not just SpaceX, Blue Origin's doing this. And this has now changed the narrative. We can now make these reusable from a technical state uh, and now see the benefits of cheaper access to space.